Great. Well, thank you everybody for sticking around. That was a fantastic panel. I really enjoyed that. And you know, it, it really sums up in a microcosm what's great about the formal microbial threats and what's great about this meeting in particular. The the brain power in the room is insp inspirational, and the you know to have former ministers of health, head, heads of big foundations, people who've tried to, like Jay, push policy through um, on NCDs and, and just relentlessly um, try that agenda is really, um, we, we get some great um, lessons from that. And I just want to finish off by saying a couple things. Um, first of all, so the next slide, we've got the December meeting on the next slide. Oh, okay, no. So first of all, I want to, um, I want to just make a comment that I think that in this meeting, we, there has been, for me anyway, this, I've, I've learned a, a huge amount. I come from the emerging infectious disease side, so I learned a lot about NCDs that I didn't know. Um, and it's very interesting. But also, there seems to be, I mean, I'm hoping that some collaborations will develop out of this meeting between individual people in the room. But I really feel like we need to continue to this discussion and this agenda and find ways forward. So one thing we will do is we'll have a workshop uh, pres um, a summary that will be published so we can, we've got a document we can refer to. But I hope maybe there's other um, aspects we can think about. So afterwards we're going to have a closed session of the forum members. We'll try and brainstorm some other ideas, maybe an editorial. I mean, one of the problems is we created so many silos now that which journal do you put that editorial in? <laughs> You know, there's uh, Lancet, Lancet Global Health, Lancet Energy, Lancet Planetary Health, Lancet Infectious Disease, you know. We're doing this relentlessly. So I want to I finish with a, I've, I've been, you know, I've been buried in, every now and again I've been doing things on my laptop. And I've actually been researching on the internet. Can you pass my laptop from down there, please? I've been researching on the internet. I've, I've developed a very large slide deck, which I'm going to go through now. Um, with some incredible, I've done an actual research and data analysis, um, which I'm going to show you now. Um, so I want to start off by what, you know, three really big lessons that, that I've learned from this um, workshop. And I think we've solved it all, really. You're going to hear it all in a minute. So first of all, we've solved what we're dealing with. Uh, it's not an elephant, okay. I, I, you know, I don't like that, that analysis. It's kind of stupid. We hear it a million times, the blind person and the elephant. It is a blind person, for sure, um, but it's not an elephant they're dealing with. This blind person is trying to grasp um, something much more difficult than an elephant and much more difficult to understand. They're not feeling around the elephant's rump and wondering what they think it's a whale or whatever. It's a complex, tangled web of information and ideas. I feel like we've, we've sat here and we've had this hose pipe, like a mi microbiome hose pipe of ideas coming at us and we're trying to dissect what's in there. It's a complex, tangled web. We heard about that. Um, but in it are some nuggets of value, and we've got to grasp those nuggets. These, these are the mechanistic ideas. These are the ways we'll simplify the message and talk to policymakers. And, and these are the solutions. These are the ways we... And we definitely heard about that today as opposed to the first day. And the first day we heard how complex this issue is, the second day, we got real examples of how, even though we don't understand the mechanism, it works. So we treat children for trachoma, and you get um, less death. That's great. We don't know the mechanism, but it's a real solution. So what is the analogy? And that's the solution I've come up with. I've worked out what we're dealing with. We're blind people trying to grasp a complex network like spaghetti with nuggets like meatballs. This is a typical New York meal, by the way, you know, New York City. You get spaghetti and meatballs. So imagine you're a blind person, you're trying to grasp a very, very large spaghetti and meatballs, and it's falling through them. If we can only pull out those nuggets and take them to the politician, they'll give us the funding we need to move it forwards. So that's one thing I've solved. Clearly, you're under I'm coming at you from a cynical and sarcastic point of view. I'm, I'm not going to have any solutions for you. It's pretty clear already. Um, the second thing I think we really got to understand today and yesterday is um, we, you know, I like the idea, I like what you did with us. I'm from Northern England. I'm a kind of a, I'm not a posh Brit. I'm from the working class North. We're kind of downtrodden. We speak very bluntly. We don't like to hug and talk about our feelings and all this stuff. So 
The minute you got up and said, well, tell, you stand over there and you stand over here, here we go, come on. And then we didn't do anything. I thought, well, what, are we gonna, like, are we gonna do anything about that? No, we had to think, spend time on our own feet getting in touch with our feelings. So I don't know what I was thinking about, um, but it wasn't that. However, I think it has value what you did, because what you did is you showed us, really, we do select, we self-select. We put ourselves in silos, and those silos are incredible. It got me thinking afterwards about how we self-select our silos. We have our own journals, like the Lancet Global Health, or the Lancet NTDs, or whatever it is. And it's hard to publish your stuff in the other journal. And it's hard to publish something in the middle in one of them, because you lose one audience. We have our own funding streams. We have our own ways of doing research. But it's worse than that, and this is what we've got here. Here's a typical, um, it's like a McKinsey consultant slash young medical doctor. Now this person, is this person a, an NC, NCD person? No. This chap is on his way to Washington to pitch his great idea on emerging diseases, pandemic threats, because he's wearing the right outfit for that. So we, we select, when you go in a room, you know certain people are going to dress a certain way. Um, and other people are going to dress a different way. So we, we do everything like that. And I, and I know because I've been to many different meetings, you know, part of Future Earth, so I meet a lot of NCD folks. They speak differently. They're more in your face. They use slang. They, they're, they're more activist. It's a different community with different belief systems and different behaviors. And that's how hard it's going to be to break down those silos because we've already selected ourselves and put ourselves in silos it, that that's where our community is. So we've got to get out of our community, walk across that shot gap, meet in the middle, take off our jackets, and in the case of some communities, maybe upgrade to a bit of an Italian suit, and the others downgrade to the Tweedy thing with the Walmart, so, you know, you know what I'm saying, without being offensive. I didn't say which community does which, but there you go. <laughs> that's true, yeah, that's, yeah. The best thing you do with the McKinsey folks come around is tell them, oh, uh, where did you get your suit, TJ Maxx? That really upsets them, you know. <laughs> um, now, so the last thing that, and this is really, I think, the key, key message for me is that this is an issue of equity. And whatever we try and do um, to think this through, there's a huge equity problem. Now, as we go to politicians to talk about our agenda, I think I've got a much easier sell um, to a funder or to a politician, and we're going to stop the next pandemic if you give us, I mean, you know, a couple of billion dollars, we'll fix it. Or even $20,000, we can do something. Um, and the reason, in, in the US, we don't really get um, Nipah virus or Ebola. We had one case and brought in, uh, you know, a couple of others brought in by design. But the hype and concern is real enough to drive huge amounts of money for that issue. And that hype and concern is because people here know that it can get here and it can affect their health. What they also think they know about um, things like NCDs is it's not going to affect us. We're not going to get malaria. We're not going to get, um, you know, um, some, well, malaria is a good example. We're not going to get malaria, really. We're going to get pockets of it as travelers come in. But we have air conditioning. We have, we have um, uh, mesh nets on the windows. And so, it's less of a, of a sell, it's more of a sell to that um, uh, sort of altruistic side of a politician. And some of them don't have that, so that's quite a hard one. So I think we've got to learn from each other on this. I think that, as we heard in the last session, the, the NCD people have got to um, make this stuff more urgent, more directly applicable to people in the richer countries that are funding it, that need to fund it, um, and, and cooler. And, uh, you know, and speak in more dramatic languages about threats. You know, it, we talk about global health security. I mean, that's, that's a great sell. Um, why can't we talk about um, NCD security? I mean, surely if you've got a whole population, a country that's got crippling chronic disease issues that, and, and poverty and hunger, that's a, that's a country that could have political instability and security issues. It's all well known but it's less direct and less threatening. So I think we need to use some of that language. And the bottom line is, um, 
clearly not both sides of this. So this is a map of where the next emerging disease is most likely to emerge. If you look at where that, that is, those are also the places that are, you know, that we were talking about earlier, that if you look at NCD threats in the future, are most likely to have um, continuing NCD issues. Um, so if you, we're going to fix pandemics, we need to work in countries that also have huge NCD burdens. We need to work with public health systems and help them improve. Because when a disease emerges there and gets on a plane, it always comes to the countries that travel the most, which are the richer countries, and that includes the US, Europe, Australia, Japan. Um, and likewise, when countries go through security issues related to NCDs, that breakdown always costs the richer countries more. Well, it costs them too. So I think there's an equity issue that can be used to sell this agenda um, in the richer countries and use that funding to really deal with these issues. But I, you know, I just want to finish by saying thanks again to all of the speakers. You did an amazing job. To all the moderators, to the planning committee, um, and to the members of the forum that supported this. It is unusual for the Forum on Microbial Threats to talk about non-microbial threats, but it really is eye-opening, and I think we've really catalyzed some synergistic stuff here that could be really cool. So thank you all for coming, and please come to our next meeting in December on innovation in tackling microbial threats. Thank you very much. <laughs> meeting adjourned.